All right, Mike, we've been waiting a year to say this. You ready? Mm -hmm. Tiger Woods is back. He's back. Back this week. Mm -hmm. Wow. We're excited. We're going to be talking about this. We're going to talk, of course, about the PNC. And welcome back to the Golf Podcast. This is episode number 406. Later, we're going to dive into our weekly instruction segment. We're going to talk about how to turn around a bad round in progress. And we're going to dig into the news first. And, and so speaking of talk, talking about turning around a bad round, we've got one, a fun story of a guy tossing his club, helicoptering it into a lake. What a and, story that And is, still huh? manages to put together a good round. So if that tells you anything yeah. about how you can turn around a, good, a bad round, this is it. And if there isn't a more relatable golf topic than this, I don't know what is. Uh, we've all we all get it. hit with it. Exactly. So. so we might as well figure out how to, to turn it around. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. But first, of course, we got to dig into Tiger. So uh, just about a week ago, the news came out. Tiger committing to play in the PNC with his son, Charlie. Uh, and now it, it's obviously it's been confirmed. Everything is set up. And now it's just it's just waiting a couple more days before this thing kicks off. PNC, it's a, it's a weekend tournament, right? Saturday, Sunday tournament. It's a Saturday, Sunday, two day. Uh, it's 20 of golf's major champions and their families. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So it, it's just 20 twosomes. Exactly. Always adds a bit of excitement. And speaking of which, you know, we got Mike Thomas and, and Justin Thomas, the defending champs. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, Justin Thomas, you know, he's always in there in the mix. And then Mike Thomas, you know, no slacker of a golf, you know, you know, golfer himself. He's a golf pro. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I believe that Justin uh, is the third generation of golfer there. I That's believe right. his grandfather. grandfather, who recently passed away, was also a, a PGA professional. Um, but I do like that aspect of it too. And and I, I always like when when JT's in the mix. I think he adds a good energy to it. I remember when he was hosting the match with Tiger right. just about a year or so ago. Mm -hmm. uh, they're just out there ribbing each other and he and Tiger uh, seem to always kind of have fun going back and forth. They, but all eyes Charlie. would be on him. Especially Charlie. Remember last year he kept you know, yeah. the uh, the smack talk? He did. He did. He was good about and it. And that's the thing that I'm, I'm so impressed with with this kid. 12 years old, mm -hmm. right? Not only is he hanging in there competitively the way he's playing and, and seemingly just progressing and getting better and better. But the mental fortitude it takes to 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 do that on that stage at that level. Mm -hmm. Think about it. We, you know, we joke about first tee jitters. We get, you know, we get upset. Like a couple people are watching and all of a sudden it's a little bit harder to, to hit the ball the way we want to do it. Now here's a kid who is going to be front and center stage in his father's first tournament back since the accident the entire world is going to be watching oh, this yeah. thing. Oh, yeah. You're absolutely right. The Whereas in previous world. years, it's a little bit, the PNC is a little bit of a novelty. Right. Right. But now it's Tiger's return. Yeah, it's become way bigger than that. And, you know, I love seeing all the, the highlights from last year, and they keep flashing that awesome shot of him hitting that uh, that draw around the tree. Yes. And he puts it to like four feet, and he just goes up and taps in the eagle. It's incredible. I mean, we're out here trying to make bogey. But I, look, I think we, we can expect some, some big things for this kid. Um, but again, talking about that pressure, right? Mm -hmm. Have you seen the the, the books, the, the uh, sports books already are putting odds on him? Yeah, it's pretty insane. I mean, I don't know how to really... I mean, what well, are these let's odds? read through some of these. So they've got, Jeez, <laughs> you can actually, these are things you can actually <laughs> bet on. This is where the world has gone. 12 year old kid. Wow. Uh, 825 to one uh, for Charlie to win a major by 25. Mm -hmm. Okay. 1501 to win a major before 22, like his father. Uh, here's another one. Two to one to earn his tour card by age 24. So it's, it's just telling you right I there. Might, I might take all of them. <laughs> I mean, honestly, you think about it, 1,500 to one for Tiger Woods' son to win a major before he's 22. He's 12, and he's hitting those draws to Eagle. I think I take the bet. It is It is. Put 10 bucks an down and call it a day. To win at that age. Yeah, but 10 bucks. Down. When did Tiger win? Zach, when did Tiger win his first major? Do you well, know? it says, like his dad, it's before Tw 22. Oh, age, before, got it, 22. I think he was 21, right? That's right. He was 21 when he won. And, but but here's the thing that's so crazy. Two to one odds on getting a tour card. It's just basically saying it's a lock. He's This kid's going to have his tour card. That's a lock. I mean, so you believe it's Think true. about the schools. Think about- you know what I mean? Yes, I do. Stanford probably, and do you? So I guess I'll ask you this question: Do you think there's any chance that we don't see Charlie Woods as uh, on the PGA Tour at one point? I, I would say there's. Is that where his trajectory is headed? Barring any injury or anything from now until he gets there, I'd say we're going to see him there. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. Definitely. I mean, clearly he shows interest in the game. He's, he's got, out there. He's grinding. He's playing. He he's has the team, the facility. He's got everything he needs to be at the top of his game. Yeah, 
And 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 I think you can put all of those things into someone, and there's still a level of they got to have some talent. And I think he shows it. Yeah. But the but again, the talent that I'm most impressed with is his mental fortitude. He's just he's cool out there. How many? And I understand. Here's a kid who who grew up in the spotlight, right? Mm-hmm. As much as Tiger would allow it, right? He grew up in the spotlight, but still, I mean, to be 12 years old and to be out there. Doing that, knowing you're, you're yeah. on television, the fans, the stuff like that, and how cool he is, uh, it's incredible. If he's cool now, just imagine. And by the way, how do you hold on to a bet slip for like 10 years? How does that work? A great question. <laughs> you just tuck it away in the sock drawer? I guess you do. <laughs> it's all online these days. That's true. I That's... guess it just sits in your account and just hope that casino doesn't go out of business. Okay. But but Zach, you were telling us a story before about Medalist, right? What, what happened with, with Charlie at Medalist? Um, I believe Charlie shot an 80 at medalist uh, on Tiger's first round back with him. Um, Tiger, you're saying it was from the back, the back tees, not the forward I don't, tees usually I, plays? He used to play on the kids' tees, yeah. and now um, they went one back from there, okay. Tiger said. So, so I don't think he's playing, obviously he's not playing from the pros. Not the tips, but, but he's playing like the adult tees. For sure. That's incredible. Yeah. That's medalist, cool. that's a tough course. and I mean- it just shows. It'll tell you he's it, he's on the right trajectory. It, it will. And I wanted to just talk about this quick story because this story that not many people heard about Mike Thomas. Yeah. Speaking of Justin Thomas and Mike Thomas, um, I reached out to um, Justin like 2015. Yeah, yeah. And this was right before his first major win on tour. I believe it was the CIMB in Malaysia was his first tour. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hey, we're an up and coming podcast. We're about two years old and we'd love to have you, you know, Justin, you'd love to have you come on the show. Well, going back even further, we had bumped into him. I bumped into after at the Barclays. I bumped into oh Justin Thomas. Yes. Yes. We bumped into Justin Thomas at the Barclays. That was our first Where exposure he was to him. Doing it the was, thing with Ricky Fowler's clubs. Right. And it was one of those moments when it's a new guy on tour, you didn't know who he was. Right. We didn't know who he really was. Right. And we bumped into him, had a little laugh with him on the on the And it was and, at that moment where I was like, I like this guy. Right. And yeah. I'm saying that's what the, the start of the story was yes. the trigger for Sorry. us to want to get You're him right. on the pod, right? Exactly. Yeah. So I was like, I like this guy. You're right. And he seems like he's got a fun person. He was playing jokes on Ricky and we Let's like this guy would be fun show. on the pod. Yeah. Right. Okay. Mike Thomas writes back his dad and he says, you know, you know, due to his schedule, it's it's a busy time of year and uh, he's unable to do it right now, but let's circle back at some other point. Yeah. Then he went on to win and, you know, I don't know how many the rest wins is later, history. the rest is history. Yeah. So, you know, I've seen, I've run into Mike Thomas at, at other Northern Trust when he's around. He's a great guy. We've seen him in the mm-hmm. Titleist booth at the PGA show. Um, super cool guy, down to earth. Uh, but I just thought it was funny. I tried to go back and find that email. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I was going to all these different servers, like old, like GoDaddy email <laughs> servers. I couldn't find it. But, um, well, I certainly don't think that Mike is still handling, uh, running he's definitely all not Justin's anymore. affairs anymore. Exactly. That's how long ago it was. Yeah. But that's wild. Hey, look, let's start a new campaign. Let's get him on the pod. Let's get let's go. Justin Thomas. Any of you out there got a line to JT, tell him we want him here on the podcast. And we were this close. So close. Just missed our chance. You gotta catch him early. You gotta get him early. You gotta catch him early. But anyway, so so Tigers, going back to speaking about Tigers. So obviously this is the big week. Um, a lot of people have all different varying expectations. I think one expectation I just have is just hoping just to see him being having fun and being competitive. You know, I, I don't think this is going to be something where we're looking to have him making any miracles out there. No, really. I just be happy to see him get through both days, no injuries, just looking good. And then he's got a couple months that he can continue to prepare for what we really want to see, which is the masters. But we've talked about it here on the show before his streak of holding number one spot. And this graphic just kind of dropped out this week. Um, yeah. Where you, when you see it visualized like this, mm-hmm. and this is what we talked about. We said how hard it is now to be number one because we've got so many incredible golfers. Look at these last couple of years in the mix, everybody from DJ Rom, Kepka, um, Rory in there. And it just seems to like bounce back and forth. And these guys have, you know, great years. They have standout years, but to do it for as long as Tiger did, it's and incredible. Just, it's inc- absolutely incredible to hold on to that streak. It's one of those, again, Tiger records that I think will never be broken. But we got a good but, laugh, though, right? Well, yeah, look at this. So you got Tiger 98 to 2009. And the only one to break his streak right there in 20, 2004 was VJ. VJ. And VJ, of course, with the savage comment, he comes in and he says, only one to defeat the streak. <laughs> I love it. That you is gotta. too funny. You got it, especially if you're the guy who did that. 
Definitely. And that's one thing that I, I, like I said, I continue to like about these guys. The more you get like inside the ropes and start to hear and see it. Now we're seeing like everyone's seeing it with these new events where they get mic'd up. You realize how, yes, is they're super competitive, but they're all good friends and they all love to like really yeah, rib cool. each other. It's cool. But speaking of, of uh, savage comments, you sent me this one the other day. Tell us about. Oh yeah. This, so yeah. this is, I was just um, scrolling through my, my Facebook feed and uh, I came across this, uh, this advertisement for Innisbrook, you know, Copperhead, you know, the, uh, the, the Valspar plays there every year. Yep, yep. And it, it served me because, you know, you and I were looking to take a trip there. Right. So they, their marketing worked. Um, but this guy, what's his name up there? A uh, guy, guy, guy goes, he, he, he responds to the ad. He goes, be there next Friday. This you can tell this guy's psyched. He's psyched. stoked, yeah, right? Yeah. Then you got Troy who immediately comments right below him and says, hey, guy, they're aerating the greens on Thursday. <laughs> Come on, leave the guy alone. The wind left his <laughs> sails faster than <laughs> his sails faster than oh, anything man. you can imagine. Now, to your point before, I'm sure he knows about it. Does he? Well, I don't know. I mean, you're going on a trip like that. Do you, I, I'm sure a course of that caliber would would let there. I got to say, in my own experience, first of all, you don't walk up to a course like that and pay a greens fee and be no, surprised. No, you, like right. you have to get a tee time in advance. And in my, any time I've ever had experience. When I call the pro shop or like, I guess if you book it online, it might be different. But if you call the pro shop and you go to make a tea time, they, usually the courteous thing that they'll do is they'll tell you if it's been aerated. Yeah. But I, I guess it is pretty common. I hear people lamenting it about it on Unless on he was just busting his chops. He could have been. He could just been a guy who was just being mean. But I mean, it's one of, you know, those things that golfers always hate, say they hate is that when after you pay your greens fees and get out there, then you find out they've you find, been punched. Then you find out. That, I, that's a tough one. I think that's it's a tough thing. You got to know going in. That's you know? a tough pill to By spot. the way, before we move on, I just want that number one graphic I want to ask you before. I, I'm going to make a bold claim that I think a 2022 face is going to be Morikawa. I was going to say this. If you're going to ask me who it's going to yeah. be, I think you it's going to be Morikawa. Okay. He was knocking on the door last week. He's Morikawa. so close now. He's yeah. so close. Um, I think he's- He may grab it in the beginning of the year and not hold it. I don't right. know, but we're going to see him in one. I just think he's he's one of the most consistent golfers out there, and I think that that's what's going to lead to it. Because you get some of these other guys, like, like I think- Dustin Johnson goes through incredible hot streaks. Yes, he does. And I even sure. remember Rory once saying that he's unbeatable when he's when he's on. Mm -hmm. um, but we've also seen with DJ, he kind of disappears for a while. He kind of slumps a little bit, and and it, it, that's where he like he can take that number one spot when he's hot. The only other guy, I mean, I'm thinking John Rahm. Yeah, he's cons year over year. <laughs> he's had some struggles on missing events. I mean, the guy had COVID twice, twice. yeah, and caused him to miss a lot of events, but. Morikawa just he's just in that mix he's got the game he's got that game that travels and he's able to to play well at all different venues and mm -hmm. all different levels we've seen him already win a major you know he just he's a guy that I think is uh, got to be a favorite to, to get to that number one spot yeah definitely definitely and you know speaking of a favorite let's talk about local favorites I want to switch gears and talk champions tour and for a good reason because it's it hits home for us yeah no doubt definitely hits home Rob Labritz talk he's, about a guy we're going to get on the pod 100% he'll yeah. be sitting right here at some point soon hometown guy or local guy I should say Glen Arbor Country Club uh tell the story this is a guy he's a club pro go ahead been a club pro, pro for a long time like I said we first uh met him at Glen Arbor quickly became friends with him I think as anybody who's ever met Rob will do he's just one of those personalities that's just like a, a magnet just yep. a terrific guy but He's been a club pro uh, for a long time, but always had his sights on playing on tour. But what I was so impressed with when we first met him, he is one of those guys who is just so focused on a singular goal. And and we when we first met him, he said, you know, I'm going to win the uh, the senior PGA championship. And it's like, okay. Oh, and, you know, nice to meet you. He, here's a guy that everyone since that we've spoke to who knows Rob is actually like, he's an absolute gamer, He's a, but he's a grinder too. And that's what it takes to really win at this level. But he has, as as of right now, you know, he, it's not like he came completely out of nowhere. Rob has played in, I think, eight plus majors. You know, he he's a PGA professional and he's been in the, the PGA championship. He played most recently at Kiowa, the, the Ocean right? Course, played in the PGA championship. So he's got though that experience but anyway so this was q school for the pga champions uh just last week and as he was doing it you and i were, were watching the leaderboard as everybody who kind of knows him is and we're all been chatting about it with the leaderboard look at rob go this he's got this thing and um it comes down to the wire and and you know he comes out and he, he just outright wins the thing yeah by like what three strokes three strokes 
He, he just wins. You know, it. to punch his card, I think he needed to finish in the top five, and he yeah. wins mm-hmm. the thing. And like I said, he's so driven. He's got so much focus. And I'll never forget this. He told me the story because I think this is what happens with a lot of the the club pros is that the, it's a different life, and it's a life that – really requires in a lot of ways you to take your, your yourself out of your own game because it get, lends itself to a lot of teaching and stuff like that. And a lot of the instructors, we'll talk more about this in a few minutes. I want to talk about some of these rates, some of these instructors charge, yes. but it is its kind of own world, its own life. And a lot of these guys, they'll, they'll, they'll do that instruction and they end up, we ask them the question like, Hey, do you get to play much? I'm right. thinking about all the different playing lessons we do. And like, no, I'm really tied up with instruction mm-hmm. because that's how they make their living. So Rob told me this story, and this was years ago. So I don't know the name of the, of the owner of the club at the time, but he said he, you know, he was he was the the head professional, and the the owner calls him in and he says you're you're not booking enough lessons, you're not plan, you, you know, you're not bringing in enough revenue with lessons. Um, this is you know we've got to change this. You've got to you got to do more lessons. And again, singular focus. This guy's been doing this for three decades. He knew where he wanted to be. He said, I stood up, put my hand out. And offered my, you know, politely offered my resignation right then and there. Mm-hmm. He said that, uh, thank you very much. That's not the direction I, I'm headed. And and the owner says, whoa, whoa, whoa Rob, sit, sit back down. Like, like, what? What do you mean you're resigning? Like, I, you know, this is what I need or whatever. He said, no. Listen, let me put it to you this way. I am going to one day play on the on, uh, you know, on the tour. I'm going to win the, 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 you know, a major. He goes, but I, in order to do that, I need to be able to have my practice time. I need every week need to be able to play in the ground. He goes, I will still do lessons, but I need to carve out that time for myself. And trust me, it'll pay off for you in the end because I'm going to put this course on the map mm-hmm. when everyone knows that, you know, a tour player I- I- is here. And, and sure he said enough. the owner, you know, <laughs> and, and again, it's one of those things that like it, when it rubs off on you, yep. you know what I mean? You can just, it's you you know when rob's talking it's not blowing smoke yeah mm-hmm. you know you can feel the tangibility of his drive and he he said that the owner said okay and since that day you know he's committed the time always to his game to always be working on his game and those 30 and, years paid off right there and look at think about it i mean he's 50 50 he's years got old. a family he yep. has this job mm-hmm. and yet he's winning and it's all because, like I said, because of that focus, he knew exactly. that he had to put this much so time into grind. Mm-hmm. And it teaches us too, as as just regular everyday golfers, what it takes truly to play the game at the high level. No matter your talent, we talked about Charlie. No matter your talent, you've got to be dedicated to the grind. Yeah, you got to be. And he's out there practicing, grinding, getting ready, and it paid off. What was he seventeen under? Yeah, something like that. I was nervous for him in day. The guy's two, a stick. But yeah, he's a stick. That's for sure. And and I'm gonna read this text message from Rob, and I don't think he would care about this because he doesn't share anything personal. He just I reached out. I said, Rob, we'd love to film with you this fall. This was back in um, October. Yeah. And this is how nice of a guy Rob Labritz is. He goes, Michael, sure, just need to find some time. I may be at the first stage for Champion School Tour Q School. I'll know after this week he goes a top five finish at the senior club pro allows me to bypass the final stage and go directly to the finals in december which he just won right i'm like that's awesome keep us posted good luck so like he's going through all this prep but he's like yeah let's do it right let me just find some time like Uh, great dude like i said just an incredible we're gonna be rooting for him hard yeah uh but it just it just shows you that that hard work pays off that that dedication pays off because he he never lost sight of it even you know he's now 50 years old and he just kept going and kept grinding and i just we got to go see him is there any local we got to find a local champions tour event that he's going to be in right and 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 go we'll have to check the schedule and and see but uh just absolutely incredible um Switching gears, uh, we talked a little bit last week about this, and I know right now it can be a kind of a slow news time for golf because the the PGA Tour is a little bit in hibernation. However, it's equipment season. We start to see the leaks rolling out, and now we're starting to see some of those confirmations of those leaks. So and now the Callaway driver. So we saw the uh, some images pop up a little bit. Uh, looks like they're they're carrying on that rogue name. Not a fan um, of aesthetically. Aesthetically, yeah. I, I'll tell you what, I kind of dig that matte black with that gold punch. Yeah, I it. mean, you got to like it. Kind of cool. For me. But it looks like there's going to be uh, at least two different versions here. Okay. Um, you've got uh, one that looks like it's got an adjustable, again, slider weight, and then one that's like draw bias model, the Max D. Mm. Uh, interesting name that they went with there, but uh, leave you to your own speculation on that. Yeah, I don't know, guys. Let us know what, I mean, we, what did we talk about? The the Stealth was the last on the last show. That's Taylor Maid's new club. Yes, we talked about and the now stealth. Callaway yep. drops, and usually they drop around the same time. Yeah, and now once you start to see that, now we're starting to see more and more pictures emerge of, of 
PGA Tour players practicing with them. Mm -hmm. You know, a little bit of. I feel like Taylor May and Cowboy photos. are always on the same release schedule. Is it just me? Yeah, it's just well, that's why they call it a, a equipment season right you know, now. There's Everybody, other manufacturers that are not. They'll go like off. True. Know. There's true. I think what a lot of them do, they gear up and they get ready for that the what do you call it, the PGA, PGA show. show? Yeah. And I think that's when we really we start to like see confirmed links leaks right around now, and then right in February right. we get hit with the official news. Uh, they get brought out to demo day and things like that. Um, or a lot of them will start their like their tour testing uh, in you know, the Hawaii swing in January, which is coming up right around the corner. Yeah, two weeks. Two weeks. Um, but is Tiger is Tiger going to be using the stealth this weekend? You think? Such yeah, a good, good question. question. Yeah, it would be a smart move for TaylorMade, right? With all eyes on it, it, it certainly would. It certainly well, would. But uh, but Tiger, yeah. I, we know, is not someone who can be pressured <laughs> by money <laughs> to to do something. True. Yeah, it, it's got to work for him. But I don't see any reason it wouldn't. T Tiger seems to. Uh, he adapts well to to new equipment. Yeah. The only thing we don't see him changes is his putter, more or less. That's you know? true. I mean, you might not. I mean, I think you, the first time you might see it is at Kapalua. It could be. Yeah, yeah, with with the other players, not with Tiger, obviously. Right. right. Um, but anyway, so we we kind of tease this at the top of the show. But did you see this story with uh, this guy who <laughs> launched guy. his putter? <laughs> okay, I, I'll just read this this um, tweet because I think this is probably the most well composed tweet I've ever read in my life. So this is from, from uh, Monday Q Info handle. Uh, he said, during the second round Sunday, Matt Avery shot 29 on the front nine at Riviera Open. And he bogeyed 10 and 12, slams his putter on the car path, picks it up, helicopters it into the middle of a pond, putts with his wedge the last six holes, plays them four under, shoots 63, finishes six. This man's a legend. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold on a sec. So you got to break this you, down. You got to break it down. Right. So a bogey makes him that angry. So, well, first of all, okay. you think he shot 29 on the front nine. So okay. I got to think his putter had to be hot. Your putter can't, you can't shoot 29 and have, not have a, a hot putter, right? Right. right. I mm -hmm. mean, unless he was chipping in from everywhere. Mm -hmm. But then if he shoots 29, why would a bogey make him so upset? Depends I can only on think maybe bogey. he's on 59 watch. He could be on 59 watch in his, his mind. It just depends on what those, how bad those bogeys were. You know, did he lip out some easy ones? Did Something with the putter itself upset him, but this is this is not the only time he's done this, right, Zach? Didn't he do this once before? I, th I think he did it in uh, 2019 um, with a wedge. <laughs> Put that thing like way down. His clubs, huh? So listen, don't don't be uh, if you're Matt Every's clubs, watch your back. Yeah, watch you your know? back. But he still shot a 63. Is that so what it was? Chipping, putting Jeez. with his, yeah, 63 putting with his his wedge. Wow. And I, I loved some of the comments on that picture of him throwing the wedge. People are talking about the, the lag on it. The lag on it. I love it. <laughs> oh, that's Can the, you get in trouble for doing this type 100%. of stuff? hundred percent. On the PGA Tour, you get fined. You I do. mean, I remember uh, Rory tossed his six iron into the lake. Where was that? At Bay Doral, Hill? Doral, I think. Doral. Yeah. And then remember the, the guy, scuba guy, retrieved it. Yep. Probably got a pretty penny mm -hmm. for it. But um, I think he was fined somewhere around between three to 5000 if I if I remember correctly. Jeez. Didn't Rory... He threw it recently, too. Threw a club at Liberty. He did. He threw it in the woods. Yeah, and we were joking that Mike was going to drive down there. Gonna and drive. Go get it. It was just three wood, I think. Right. He threw a three wood in the woods. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. Yeah, I think it's... What is it? Like, uh, it's like actions unbecoming of a of a PGA pro. It, that's what they cite, and then they say, fine okay. you. Something yeah. like that. Okay. So these guys, yeah. I doubt that, that it makes any difference Kick to them. Kick them off the tour, Doug. Kick them off. <laughs> but... Uh, Legend, you you, you right. gotta laugh at this. I it's mean, great. and we'll talk. Like I said, we'll talk more about it in our instruction segment later about how to like bounce back because we've all had those moments. Yeah, six um, holes with no putter. To that's a 63. tough. Come on, uh, he was something was working for him something that day. Guy shot sixty three. Um, so that was a wild story. And then um, switching gears too, like I mean, getting to see some of this. Mm -hmm. You know, that's my best segue that I can give you for this one. <laughs> <Let's> but uh, <laughs> but <laughs> PGA Tour, ESPN Plus signed a major major broadcast deal. Yes, I saw this. Um, and I think this is no matter what this. All these deals that we see are are good for for us fans. Now I get it. Um, some people are going to say, as we saw with PGA tour live ESPN plus, these are, these are pay services. Uh, and I know some people are upset when they don't get to see certain early rounds because they're all against that paywall. However, um, we're not talking about incredibly expensive. I think ESPN plus is, is like f between five and $7 a it's month. It's not the same as Disney plus. Or? I believe there's a bundle. You can get it with uh, Disney plus. Yeah. yeah there's like a 
fourteen dollar bundle that you can get Hulu, Disney Plus, and ESPN, ESPN Plus. Plus. Right, because Disney owns ESPN. Right, that's what I'm thinking. Right. And Disney Plus, you know, my household and your household too probably is a must. But it's I got a must. It's a must. You got kids under ten. 10 it's, yeah, a must. it's a must. Yeah. You got to imagine that everybody already has ESPN Plus at this point. I would think everyone has Disney Plus at this point. Like yeah. Anyone with kids. Right. All right. I don't have ESPN Plus. Well, oh, really? Saying. Not yet. I've never heard of somebody that doesn't have it. All, I have the Ocho. Everybody. I don't, I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't have Plus. I didn't know it was a separate thing. I thought it was part of your Disney. Okay. Well, yes, because you don't have because you already had it. Yes. He's like he doesn't know about it because he already had right. it. But to your point, that's what I mean. It's not like it's an obscure a network that you're paying out, out the nose for. You know, I think it's like I said. I think it's good for us. And I think where we saw like them dipping their toe in this was I don't remember exactly which event it was. It was one of the I think majors. It was, the players. was it the players? Where they were going to show might every, have been the players. They had a where they on every person and they partnered. I think it was with Amazon at the time. Right, because right. don't forget, like. The, Unlike other sports like baseball, it's contained to that field and it's, it's easy to kind of show everything. You're talking about all participants, hundreds of participants spread out over acres. Right. You know how many cameras it takes to cover all of that, let yeah. alone the, the, the bandwidth, the sheer bandwidth it takes to stream it all. Well, I think this was the biggest problem in how we consumed golf. I hated the fact that we could not watch golf until 3 p.m. Right. We missed all of the morning tea times. Yeah. But now we're saying we can see it all. Exactly. Love it. And, well, and this is where I think you start to see as daily fantasy is is mm. having its explosion. You got these guys who have these guys on their team. They want to see them. They want to see them play the early rounds. Some yeah. guys are betting on the early rounds. It was only a matter of um, time. So, and, and it was also, I think, the struggle a lot of us have always had was like, even in those early rounds, you had what? Some featured groups. Yes. Uh, and you, you had to like, kind of hope somebody or a feature hole. Now we're talking about dramatically expanding that. I'm looking for... Uh, where it said it said over 4,300 hours of live golf. So, and this is where like they start to have coverage on more players. You can see more of your favorite players. So, I think as these things expand, it only benefits us as viewers. We get just more options of what to watch. I agree. I like it. Yeah. So, I'm I'm a big fan of hearing more and more I'll about have to those opt deals. In. There you go. So he just because you already have it, you don't need to to out, go out and get it. You <laughs> you already have ESPN Plus. Yep. You're good to go. Um, and then obviously I, I want to talk, like I said in, in a minute about some of those different instructors and the rates that they charge. Mind blowing. Mind blowing yeah. rates. But, uh, of course the John Daly news, this, that have rolled out this week, we've got hit with a bunch of stories. Uh, first we saw this clip of, of John Daly, you know, doing what he does best and just kind of entertaining everyone. Just one handed chipping, got a, got no shoes on left hand only with the club. And he's got a, a drink in his right hand. I feel like he always yeah. does. I think John Daly's liver is the hardest worker in the game. I don't know how this he guy was sick keeps for, up. He still is sick, isn't he? Well, he has cancer, uh -huh. and he's fighting it. And I, I think what he had said, if I remember this correctly, if I'm not, let me know in the comments. But I think what he said was he was not going to shave his beard until he beats it. Got it. He said he's going to beat it, and he's not going to shave his beard until he beats it. Okay. I don't know the details of his cancer, but I wish him obviously well. And uh, he's got a great positive attitude. He definitely about it. does, you know, for sure. But um, uh, he's just a funny, enjoyable guy to be around. And he's out there chipping one hand and drinking the other hand. Holes out, of course. Yeah. Huge crowd pleaser. He orders four hundred plus dollars at Taco Bell and closes out. With, did you saw that story? Yeah, incredible. incredible. So he, uh, one guy said though, this was kind of funny. I saw one guy say, "This is on Uber Eats." He orders four hundred and forty six dollars and ten cents worth of Taco Bell on Uber Eats. And one guy commented, I think that's ten tacos on, on Uber Eats. <laughs> Making a little comment Wait, let, about got the, let me see that menu there. So what So we got here's what he got. Yeah. Five grilled cheese burritos, ten crunchy taco supremes, yep. ten spicy double steak grilled cheese burritos, one beef burrito, and twenty mild sauce packets. <laughs> <laughs> that's great john daly strikes me as more of a diablo sauce guy yep. the, I, the mm. mild is the word let me down there but uh you think this is all for him come on no he was just spreading the wealth yeah he, he seems like the type man. of guy i think he is isn't he the type of guy they've had the story before where he you know buys the whole round of in right. the bar and that yep. type of thing he's probably he's like just living his best life i'm sure he had that drink in one hand phone in the other he said i'm ordering taco bell who wants yeah and the, the, the bill gets big really quick doing that. Really big. And by the way, speaking of Charlie Woods, there's another son in golf that you're going to see do big things. 100%. Yeah. And he, I, I don't remember the exact specifics of it, but I remember it coming across the, the wire of him uh, saying how you know, that's his focus. His, his son's focus is to play on tour. Yeah. And we'll I think he's got the chops to oh, do yeah. it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. SEC golf at Arkansas. 
Yeah. He's not, he's not nearly getting enough cred. Everybody's talking about this 12 year old kid in Charlie Woods, but right. nobody's talking about little John Daly because he is lighting it up out there. He's they're, got, he's got in game. the field this week, right? Father, son. Yeah, they are. John Daly and John Daly Jr. Oh, that's going to be good. I knew it. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, he he uh, he's got game, and obviously his, his father is still still can play. That's for sure. So it's going to be a yep. fun tournament to watch. I'm yep. excited for that one. Um, and then let's let's chat about this. We keep teasing it. We got to talk about this this in top instructor ranking that came out from Golf Digest, and yeah. we saw some of these prices. And it makes me wonder how much would you guys pay for a lesson? Like, what's your what's your max that you would possibly yeah, consider laying out for that all time dream lesson? And is it in line with any of these that we're going to talk about? Let's if assume, so, let us know in the comments. Yeah, definitely let us know. And, and and assume that in that hour, this person is going to dissect your golf game. Right. How much are you willing to pay? Now, well, I don't care who you are. I don't think there's any any instructor on earth who's going to fix your game in one lesson. I don't believe that. They're not going to fix that. it, but they're going to... I think they'll set you on the right path. Exactly. And you've got to grind it out. Mm -hmm. um, but in one lesson, that's a tall task. Yeah, definitely. I mean, think about it. Even the, the pros who work with these guys, they don't do it in one check-in session. Yeah. I mean, well, Zach, you just took a lesson with Kevin Sprecher, who's on this list. Um, yeah. What, I, the, what you learned in that. It was worth any amount of money that I would have paid for right. it. It was your first yeah, ever lesson. For sure. I mean, he's basically given me a foundation that mm -hmm. I'll be able yeah, to look back word. on for mm -hmm my entire golfing career is going to basically but, come back to that lesson with Kevin. And you, you could know? start there and you could just build off of everything he's given you. All exactly. Those small drills. I mean, even if like, I know uh, one of the next topics that's about to come up is how expensive some of these people are, yeah. but to learn a foundation like that in such a difficult game, like golf, I, I would have paid like a thousand dollars to get what Kevin right. taught so me because it's, here. it's yeah. that important. I mean, I personally like taking, everything super serious like if i'm gonna learn something i want to do it the right way yeah and the information that kevin gave was beneficial would, I, I would have paid any amount of money to get that you wouldn't keep going at a thousand no no well, eventually he's gonna run out of money right well, so yeah so it know. was that great it's unfortunate you can't keep going right but you could take what you learned from that one now what, what do you got butch on number one here which is no, so this is this is the the crazy part and i want to ask you who you think would pay these these rates but uh butch Harmon, number one he's fifteen hundred dollars an hour yeah, which is I I think it's just another one of those incredible things about golf, which you don't get in any other sport, is that you can take the guys who are, who are teaching the pros, their instructors, and yeah. you can book a lesson with them. Now, when I say that, his book is probably pretty full. It's probably pretty full. But who who do you think at this rate? But you and that's a published rate. I, I I would imagine that they have some variation in that with depending on who they work with. Mm -hmm. And I would think with the tour pros, it's a little bit different. It might be a percentage of their earnings once they put them on the team. Whatever it may be. Listen, there's only one way to find out, right? I say we book one of these and we go and do it. <laughs> <laughs> we save our pennies, we book it, and we go and do it. Uh, I mean, be because I, now I want to know what lifetime. would go into a Butch Harmon lesson. Well, I, I, I got to think, who do you think does it? Well, first of well, all, you got to yeah. think it's the people, it's, it's, it's a, there's a true like almost business decision ROI investment for some of these guys who are the up and comers. The college, you know, st standouts. We're talking about top golfers, top amateurs in the world. Yes, they might make the investment. I'm going to work they with might. Butch because they're they're investing in their. their they're those are the guys who are on that yes. that cusp, you know, of, of tour. Wealthier parents might do that for their up and coming, blossoming a, yes. children. Or like I said, there might be a deal worked out that if let's say Butch saw a lot of, um, and I'm speculating yeah. here, but I would imagine if Butch saw a lot of potential in someone. And he want to work with them, and and, and maybe the, as like an almost like with an agent, you have yep. a percentage of some sort of potential winnings in the future. Mm -hmm. He might he might take that chance. I'm sure. I think it's that, and I think it's you know just rich dudes. I think it's just rich dudes who just uh, have the money and want to say they had a lesson from Bush. And you know a fifteen hundred dollar lesson for an hour is just nothing. Right. That, I, I mean, think, think about it. If you're CEO of, of God knows what yeah. company, and that's nothing to you, and you get on your jet, you big, fly out to Henderson, right. Nevada, you exactly. meet Bush. I mean, if you're like a golf addict, you know, I don't care how much money's in your pocket. We've all, we're all affected by our addiction the exactly. same way to the, the game. Right. Right. And right. some of these guys would be like, I'm going to get a lesson from Butch, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so you got we Butch got? We got... Harmon. Then you got Chris Como, another one, 1500 an hour, hour out of, he's out of Dallas National Golf Club in Dallas. Um, but then this one, I, I mean, this one really um, local guy. surprised me here and not, not in a bad way. I thought this was awesome. Mike Adams, mm -hmm. uh, number three, yeah, local Fiddler's Elbow uh, in, in New Jersey, 
Three fifty an hour, three hundred fifty bucks an hour. Yeah, that's much more accessible. It's much more accessible. Much more accessible. Then you got it just kind of runs through the list and bounces back and forth. But some of the highlights: Sean Foley. Sean Foley, you'll see up there. Jim know, McLean. There's who a, you tried to get a free lesson. I from. tried to on the on the PGA Tour media bus. Yeah, <laughs> they had a good laugh out of that. Yeah, like how much for a quick swing to it? And he just laughed and walked away. <laughs> well, well, if you think of his rate is five hundred an hour, so maybe for ten minutes, fifty so bucks. Fifty bucks. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I give you fifty bucks for ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Tell that to your time. That's great. Um, Jim McLean was uh, Sprecher's mentor right there. He's yes, still up there. Yes. Um, 750 Look, an Blackburn, hour. Mark Blackburn, Ledbetter. Look at Ledbetter's rate. So Ledbetter. <laughs> so we got a funny story with him too. So Ledbetter's rate here, it lists as $3,500 for a half of a day. Okay. So we were, two years ago, we were actually working with the game like training guys at the Ledbetter Academy, which had just opened down in Orlando. We were down there around the PGA show and we've been really wanting to work with the game like training guys. I think um, Ian and Zach and the team there do incredible things. And there we saw them working with a lot of those up and coming kids. Yes. And it's just like incredible the, what they do and how they teach the game and how they groom them. But it's under Ledbetter. We actually- yeah, His we, academy is impressive. It's impressive. Mm. So we're walking through the thing and we're, we're taking a look at uh, some of the facilities that just opened and we got to see David's private teaching bay. Like they have all these bays, but then at the very end is his like facility. Yep. Um, and this is where we're talking about like tour pros like Patrick Reed and stuff mm -hmm. come through for their lessons. So- um, we, I remember we asked at the time, like, well, what's his rate? And it was one of those, like, they couldn't even say. Right. They're like, I I if you have to ask, it's too much type of thing. <laughs> you if you could even get on his book. But then, and David, uh, he, we've had him here on the podcast before, mm -hmm. back when he, he had his uh, his book come out a couple of years ago. And we, we met him briefly there in person. Yes. Uh, just a really nice guy. Really nice guy. He wants to just talk golf. And you could tell at this point, when you reach that level, he's- his whole day and everything seems like it's managed. Yeah. You know what mm. I mean? You could tell he's got like someone with him who's moving him from thing to thing. I don't think that you call up and David's opened up his book. And he's like, I got a time for you. Yeah, yeah I got 10 o'clock. Sure. That's going to be 3,500 bucks. <laughs> right. We'll work until lunch. Yep. No, it doesn't work that no. way. But um, he probably takes customers when he wants to. Yeah. It's one of those. Oh, 100%. Yeah. I think it's one of those apply to work with him things. Yeah. But some of the other ones here, Cameron McCormick, 500 an hour. Yep. Uh, George Gankis, there's a guy I would love to do something yeah. with, 600 an hour. And it's so funny when you see like on Instagram his lessons mm -hmm. and they look like they're at your muni driving yeah, range. He's mm -hmm. got his, his uh, flip flops on, yep. you know, so chill. And then, I mean, one of the best in the game. Right. One of the best. Where's he located? In Down in uh, California. California. Yeah. So just, I mean, the list goes on and on. Claude Harmon. Um, we even saw like we, we, Michael Breed on here, Michael 500 Breed. bucks an hour. I'm sure Martin Chuck's up there. We've worked with him before. Yeah. Just some incredible ones. But then locally, like you said, uh, Kevin Sprecker, yep. um, by, when you break it down by state. So we've had the fortune of working with Kevin. And well, then in New Jersey, Jersey, Hager. We saw Ryan Matt Hager. Matt, yep. Uh, and Matt we're going to be doing three. more with uh, Ryan Hager uh, for sure in the coming in the coming weeks. Yeah. Uh, I think he's you know, the for one York. of the yeah. best young talent. There's the yeah, Brits yeah. pops up again. But Hager, yes, we're going to be down there at uh, Plainfield with him hopefully in a couple of weeks. Yeah, really, some some really excited about that. I, I I love his teaching style. And, and if you're not following him on Instagram, do so because he has a great way of putting out these like um, just very short, concise, to the point tips and drills. And his visuals are so good. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. He does them on Instagram, and and I I find myself constantly bookmarking his stuff. I go, oh, that's something I got to work on next time I'm at the yeah. range. Did you tell him to get on TikTok? I did. Yeah, I told him like, listen, all this stuff's incredible. Like, put it on TikTok too. Yeah. It's a learning curve for all of us to make yeah. that jump, but yeah, he should because it's kind of he should. Would be great and there. he's like, oh, I know, but I'm like, like we talked about this earlier with the Brits. These guys are so pressed for time. Yeah, They're definitely. teaching every like waking moment. Right. And and he's like, it's hard enough to put these Instagram ones together. I'm like, dude, just take the same clip and throw it on TikTok. <laughs> like, yeah, just do it. <laughs> But uh, anyway, crazy stuff. Let's, uh, what do you say? We time to take a, a quick break to a word from our sponsors and then we'll hop into this week's uh, instructional segment. How to stop a bad round in its tracks. Uh, which is something we all want to yep. do. Okay, let's do Because we've all been there, that's for sure. All right, let's, uh, let's do a quick word from our sponsors. All right, guys, the countdown, it begins. And I know you've got some last minute shoppers out there. Christmas is around the corner. So look no further than the number one gift in golf. Uh, you got to take a look at Titleist and what they've been doing with the Pro V1, Pro V1X, 
Pro V1 Left Dash and AVX Golf Balls because they make the perfect gift. I mean, Mike, is there any golfer you can imagine who would not be happy unwrapping a dozen of any of those? That's the weight of every golfer's heart. That is, that is it. That is, it's the ultimate gift. It's the ultimate stocking stuffer. Mm -hmm. uh, it is just the way it goes. And these aren't just any golf balls. Golfers know they're the very best. They're the most trusted in the world. And they deliver on that performance. They need to help shoot those lower scores. It's what makes it the number one ball in golf. And as I mentioned earlier, the number one gift in golf. So make the holidays even happier this season. Learn more about gifting the Titleist Pro V1, Pro V1X, Pro V1 Left Dash, and AVX golf balls, and all things Titleist at Titleist.com. Hop on it, guys. Only a few days left before Christmas. That's right. So grab that number one gift in golf. Yeah, definitely do that. And big thanks to FootJoy. I mean, it's getting cold, but we don't care. We always say this. We're going to play golf until we're playing, there's we're playing this week. We can't. We're playing Friday. Yeah. And I can't wait for that, by the way. We're going to do a nine-hole three-club match. Yep. And we're going to layer up because it's going to be cold. But FootJoy makes every day playable. They have more apparel for more seasons uh, than you can even imagine. Things like their phase one base layer, uh, the hybrid hoodie, which I love. It's something different. Hoodies are making a big statement on the golf course. Yeah. It's comfortable. Uh, keeps you warm. Uh, it's got that featured, uh, you know, all the, their technology that goes in for, for mobility right. and to keep you warm. So you're not hampered by the clothing uh, for your golf swing. And it, we've done it firsthand. We're out there with jackets on and we're still playing golf and not struggling with our golf It's all game. about layering and mobility so in those layers. The technology that this company puts into it is incredible. And my favorite is that Hydro Tour jacket. It's a great layer for the water, wind protection. It regulates your body temperature. It's got that uh, that dual collar that the water does not go down your neck if it happens to be raining. Uh, but it's super, you know, everything from their winter uh, golf clubs. You lent me those. Thank you, by the way, yep. last week, because I forgot mine, the Stay yep. Soft Winter Pair, and so on and so on. Guys, get to the website, footjoy.com, and load up and continue to play as long as you can this season. Yep. Also want to thank ShotScope. Uh, big thanks to those guys for sponsoring the show throughout the year. Uh, if you're new and you haven't heard of ShotScope, definitely take a look. They've got some of the greatest products out there on the market for GPS. Uh, their, their V3 watch for stat tracking, yeah. which is great. It tracks uh, hundreds of your stats. Uh, it's a great way to improve. It's a great way to enjoy the game, too, because you can take those stats. You could bring it to a coach. We always say this, and you could find the areas where you, know, you need to improve, need yeah. to work on, and the areas that you're doing well on, which is also good to know. Uh, range finders. I know they've got their uh, their Pro L uh, one rangefinder, pin lock vibration, everything you need, super packed in a great price. Um, their holiday prices are probably still great if you haven't checked yeah. them out already. I mean, they're, they're every one of their three products is below two hundred dollars. So go to shotscope.com slash golficity and go and check that out. Interestingly today. enough, Mike, I've had more people message me in the last two weeks that they've picked up the Shotscope V three than I have all year. Yeah. And I think it's largely because this, the holiday deal is absolutely incredible. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are getting into the system now and now's the time to do it. It, and it's a good segue to mention in a few weeks, we're going to be doing our uh, year end goals wrap up right. and goals for 2022, which we really lean heavily into uh, our shot scope statistics for that. It's a great thing for really dialing in and taking a look at your golf game from a granular level. And we really could not do that without the shot scope V3. So 100%. make sure you guys mm -hmm. give them a look. All right, let's jump back into our instruction segment. All right, so we're going to talk about how to stop a bad round of golf in its tracks. And I know, like I said, we've, we've recently moved the podcast onto a brand new YouTube channel. So we've got a lot of new uh, viewers and a lot of new listeners. So one thing I want to definitely say, if you are new to the show, one thing we always discuss here is that we are not professionals ourselves. We just ran through some of the rates. Maybe we should have become uh, golf pros. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, that's making some good money. Business. But we joke, but in reality, um, that is not our forte. We are just guys who love learning this game. And if we've learned something that has helped our game in any way, we bring it here on the pod and we dissect it. And our hope is that it'll help you guys learn a little bit of something too. So with anything we're talking about here, we're struggling with it too, trust me. Uh, and and we're always working on reminding ourselves of the stuff that we've talked about here. So it's a work in progress. I think golf is a game that you have to cut yourself a, just a bit of slack. You know, even if we review these things, you're like, oh, that makes sense. I want to do it. You got to still give yourself some slack if you do slip up. And from time to time, you're going to get frustrated and things like that. It's all about always working on getting a little bit better. And yeah. as that builds up years over years, and then you start to become the golfer you want to be. And you can accelerate that by putting more time. We talked about LeBritz earlier. Right. Took Putting more of that grind time in, you can really accelerate it. But it's all about cutting yourself some slack and knowing it happens. Yeah. You know? It happens almost 
every time. Right. Something and always goes wrong out there. It does. And you have to be able to, to bounce back. And I think that's one thing that we have learned from playing with so many great golfers mm-hmm. is watching how they just don't seem to get as rattled as we do Yeah, with you know a disappointing shot. Or throwing a their lipped club out in the water. putt, right? Yeah, there's things that they I just... mean, it happens. Like you said, we we talked about there with every, but um, in generally speaking, I think that's one thing. Like we we recently played with Greg Angelo. Yeah, I was just going to tell a story about this. Hopefully, it's not the same one. But no, ahead. tell us because all I was going to say is I'm I'm so incredibly uh, impressed with how measured and metered he is out there. He just he just he's able to even you know even yes. the the best golfers like Greg hit bad shots and it just doesn't. Seem doesn't to carry over the next shot right right especially like i just watched back one of the edits of a video that that you're editing for the round with him yeah and i was going to say more and more on on your side was i mean you got off to an incredible start of going even through four holes yeah then you hit one bad shot off the tee and you almost never got that par back for a while i think you parred the last hole of the day we played nine holes i think five six and seven and eight i don't think you made par yeah i had a bogey streak for three holes but you had a par streak for four before that and it yeah. was that one shot so my question to you is was that one shot is what sent you off the rails and you did not recover it's a good question i i (sighs) one thing i would say about that round i look back on it it felt and this is what we'll talk about because sometimes it feels like something's off the rails and it's not really because i look back at it and i'm like don't forget i'm i'm a 10 11 handicap right i make bogeys right yeah so i didn't have any huge huge blow-ups no triples nothing like that I just, my par streak broke and I ended up bogeying a couple of holes. Yeah. But when you're out there, you set, you have these fluctuating expectations of yourself, right? Yeah, and yeah. now all of a sudden I expect, what am I thinking? I'm expecting a par every hole. Right. And I think that's where the, the, the transition your mind has to come into effect. Be like, okay, it's a bogey. Like yeah. walk away. Like just yeah. do the you, next. You were onto something so good. How can this happen? Right. And what happens is we talk about golf being a game of pressure. And we talk about how, like you, we talked about in previous episodes, how you can practice pressure and get accustomed to it. Mm. But it's, it's also something of increasing pressure. So as we're on this par train, you know, one par, two pars, three, four in a row. Now the next hole, it's even more pressure to keep making par. Instead of just thinking, hey, what got me here? Right. What got me there, honestly, was the first three holes playing a very relaxed game, just gathering out there having fun playing with you and Greg. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, you know, I made a couple good putts and I'm and I'm I'm even through four, yep. which is great for me. Yeah, right. Great putts. Yep. And then you had to come back with that. So that's one thing. And then all the things, there's other things outside of the game that can take you out of it. And in that case, on that hole where I had that blow up, if you remember. It was where we were, had club. those altercation with those guys behind us. Oh, you're right. And we let them go forward. Right. And now understand, guys, when we film out there, and if you guys watch the videos on our main channel, um, we are very respectful of what's going on. We yeah. we get the permission of the course. In that case, Greg has is a integral role in that course, and, and he was our guide in our tour that day. And we let them know what we're doing, and oftentimes they'll give us a buffer behind us of some mm-hmm. tea times. That happened to be a day that was unexpectedly warm for November, and uh, it's what the morning started with an empty tea sheet, and then the course was full. Yeah. Everyone showed up to play, and we're recording out there. And whenever we held them up, we let them through. Always, but yeah. there was a group behind us that just wasn't having it. As soon as they saw us doing an interview in the fairway, they just hit up on us immediately mm-hmm. and started yelling, yeah. yelling to let them through. Right, right. And Greg, again. Even in that, he's so calm. Uh-huh. Calmly just says, "Guys, we're doing something here to promote the golf course, mm-hmm. and you know we're, we're not holding you up intentionally. By all means, go through." Mm-hmm. But the damage has already been done. Now we got this confrontation. These guys are yelling, and that's another thing that can take you out of your game. Yes. So it's all about finding these ways to just you know, and it comes with practice. I think it's in life too. In life, there's a lot of things that can frustrate us. It's like finding ways to just. Breathe and calm yourself so that you can move on and move through it. The question is how. How is yeah, the question. Right. But like I said, one big thing can be learned from just watching the best golfers do it. And again, I, there's just something about with some of the, the really good golfers that when they have a bad uh, shot, a bad hole or whatever, they just seem to find a way to just shake it off. Mm-hmm. So I think the very first tip is just that. It's just don't overreact. You know, um, I think, again, perspective, perspective here. We talk about what is a bad round. In that case, if I looked back at that scorecard, I'm like, oh, plus, let's say I bogey that fifth hole, plus one through five, that's great. 
you look at it from you know that high up level. It's not so big, but when you're in the moment, you overreact because now you broke your par streak. Exactly. Right. You know, we 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 we'll, we tend to do this to ourselves. We label label it a bad round really early. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. like you end up with on the front nine, you end up with you know a double, a, you know, a, a bogey and a double back to back. You're you're three over through two holes, and all of a sudden it's a bad round. Dude, there's 16 more holes to play. Right. That par streak could come later. Yeah. So why write the whole round off That's as a, a bad round? You know what I mean? That's a Where's point. that tipping point? Where do you call it a bad round? I know. And I think a lot of times we look for like, we always try to seek out that negative for some reason where like, you know. We're I, almost I should, looking to fail. We're looking to fail. Like, oh, I shot, a, I just added up my not my front nine. I shot a 41. For me, that would be great. Right. But I would say 41. I go, oh, I had a double on eight. Could you imagine if I parred it? Right. And it's now I'm out. I'm right. Right, that, it's always a could have. It, it could have, could right. have been this. Right, it could have been. It Not should like have been what better. It was. Yes, you know what I mean. And that's it. I think it's about that shifting that perspective. But the the reality is, as much as I, I want people to focus on having the right perspective out there and not talking yourself out of a good round, I think a lot of ways we we talk ourselves into the golfer we think we are. Like we'll say, like, well, I don't deserve to par this many. Something must be. Like I, I, you know, I'm on a streak. I don't want to talk about it. It's just too good. Mm -hmm. And we, we don't, we talk ourselves out of it instead of just enjoying that moment when we're playing well. But the reality is there are also times like the game ebb and flows. Some days you just don't play as well. And in that case, it's not getting frustrated with it, but it's about, I guess, recognizing it in a real way yeah, and then just true. adapting to it. Cause that's the other thing that the best golfers do. They, adapt i'm thinking about greg again i'll keep using him as an example the very first hole um he he talks about how he on the first tee it was a really a fade you know hole yep. and he wanted to play a fade and it didn't fade on him it drew and then throughout the day he was just didn't have that seemed to have that shot he was drawing a lot of but he just reworked his game and just started hitting draws at uh, yeah, you right. know what i mean mm -hmm. like you can't force the same shot shape into every single shot i get that but if it was came down to one or the other, maybe he would love to like normally hit a fade here, but if it wasn't working for him in that moment, he just adapted. Mm -hmm. So it's about changing the plan. Like, how do you change the plan? Yeah. And and one thing I've learned big time in this game, I think you'll agree with me, it's like swing changes on the course, it's not the time to start making right. swing changes. Right. Save that for the range. I'm I'm a proponent of if something wasn't working. Work your way through the round, be resourceful, and then after the round, go to the range and try to work it out. But when you try to work it out and you're out there, I've had this. This is what's really derailed me a couple times. I'm thinking of a round. I don't remember where it was, but we played uh, like a summer ago, and I just had I had a case of the shanks. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And I think I just kept making it worse because I was trying to, to yeah. overdo it, mm -hmm. overcorrect it. So one thing you can do is just find some shot that works for you. Um, I've actually heard – Another YouTuber uh, talking about this the other day about like even changing your expectations for winter. He's like, look, at the end of the day in winter, it's if it's 30 degrees out, you know, you, you can't, the ball's not going to travel the same. You can't compress the ball the same. Mm -hmm. And the thing is too, you realize the motions your body, are, yep. it doesn't, can't make the same motions. Mm -hmm. A cold muscle, muscles in the body can't move the same way. It's not as flexible. And he just said, you could still have fun, like just, just adapt. And like he started just playing like these little half shots just around and just moving it around. And it's just like wow, like that's a prime example of how you can just adapt your game. Sometimes I think one of the one another an, an, another guy which who adapts his game is your father because oh, I played countless times when where he's got a bad back and he has to adapt the way he plays. Yeah, to compensate he'll, for that, ha, he'll hit these three quarter shots yeah. and whatever, and he'll still beat me. and he'll still score. <laughs> yeah, because he'll just like case in point, he won't try to force that square peg into a round. Exactly, hole. and I think that that's that's a brilliant way mm -hmm. to approach it. But sim th similarly here, we're not telling you to get hyper conservative, but let's say the driver it's like now it's been many not labeling off of one shot but if there are many shots you just you're just not hitting your driver well again the course is not the place to work that out do some range sessions with your driver try to work out whatever you're struggling with but in the meantime maybe play a little more conservative um i remember our playing lesson at crystal springs like we talked about having your go-to shot your fairway finder go back to that or or likewise if you just don't feel like you're able to really hit your targets the way you want to. Maybe a, an idea is not to, is just to adapt from firing at pins and just go for center greens. Mm -hmm. If nothing mm -hmm. else, maybe just for a couple of holes until it comes back. Right. Because right. all of a sudden, a couple of holes of hit, like, let's say, you know, you're, 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 you're off just a little bit, right? And then you got a, a, a tucked right side pin and you fire at it and you miss to the right and you're in a green side bunker. You know, in that case, uh, that's my, 
adaptation of saying like, I just don't have that, the darts today. Yep. I'm going to go for center green. And then all of a sudden you hit a couple of greens in a row and that confidence starts yeah, to come sure. in. You know what I mean? And it's not a disaster score because you're on the green. Like I said, those small adaptations can be important. And I think for us amateurs, us 11 handicaps, 10 handicaps, a par is a single hole score that can mentally bring you back. Mm -hmm. You know, because you have a double bogey, then you go for center green, you two putt for par. It's like, oh, I got a par. I'm back. Right. You know, it could be that easy. You just got to think, is how much am I trying to force the square peg in a round hole? How much am I taking a day when I, I just don't have a shot and just trying to keep doing it over and over again? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's definition of insanity, as they say. Right. Um, right. Another thing you could do, too, is just kind of like slow things down. Because one thing I know with frustration is that it 100% is a snowball effect. It's going to, it gets worse and worse. You know, you can get more and more frustrated. And then if you're tense, we know tension. We've heard this said before. It's a cliche, but it's true. Tension kills the golf swing. It does so you're frustrated you're upset you get tense now you're starting to hit worse and worse shots you got to find a way to like just let it go yeah and i say that from a standpoint of saying i know how hard it is because we'll still never forget that day at patriot hills when i i hit that ball in the fairway and lost it lost i don't it. know if someone took it i don't know what happened but i spent way too much time trying to find it and getting more and more and more upset yeah. and frustrated and i, I just, think it's in that drain pipe but go ahead it could have gone yeah. in the drain pipe there was a drain that was there but Ultimately, I hit a terrible second shot because all I was thinking about was that lost ball. Because you knew it should have been right there on the fairway. Right. With but it's, here's home. where he's got to find a way. To, like The good news about golf is that it does afford us a lot of opportunities to take a breath. Mm -hmm. uh, there's other sports that don't. You know, There's a clock, and you're in it. You're, you're in the mix. You're playing basketball or something like that. You don't have a moment to just, like, slow things down. Right. You know, there's some caveats. Like you think about football, sometimes – you know, they'll take a time out just because things are the momentum is going the wrong way. And we got to just stop for a yeah. second and talk about Let's this. Breathe. But think about it, golf can be the same way. We've, we naturally get those opportunities walking to the next ball, uh, you know, waiting for your, your, your playing partners to tee off. You can just take a moment to yourself. It's like step to the side and just take a deep breath and like gather yourself a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. And that goes along with that. We, we've heard that before from people who are just saying treat each hole like its own round. Yeah. You know, yeah. just re, you get a restart on every tee box. Right. And we don't think of it like that. We think the whole thing is a cumulative score. Right. Just restart it. Try that. 100%. And I think one thing that you and I both have going for us is we, we share this similar mindset that, that the goal of a round – uh, or, or the, the, the enjoyment that comes from around is really not super tied to score for right. us. I, I think we've both chatted about some of our favorite all time rounds where the experience, the people we played with the things like that. So I think just that changing your focus a little bit mm -hmm. and just saying like, why, why are you really out here? You know what I mean? Now, I understand that some of you are playing at the highest level and you may be playing in a tournament that you've prepared for and it's even more frustrating that that's the day you're not playing well. But the reality is, you know, most of us are out there because we want the enjoyment and the fun of, of hitting a few good shots and yeah. things like that and just being out there with our buddies or whatever it may be. So I think shifting that expectation and bringing a little bit more of your focus and your awareness to like, you know, really think like, why am I really out here? And it's, I'm not out here because I have to be, yeah. you know, most of us are not out there because it's our living. I mean, if, if you're an average every day, Joe or Jane, and you're a weekend warrior and you're shooting a bed around, you're frustrated the rest of that weekend, then something's wrong. So yeah. you got to be able to just let it go. Let it right? go a little bit, right? Let I it mean, go, because that's going to ultimately help you play better in the future too, I think. Right. Just that entered anything that Learn introduces a little bit of relaxation yep. out there because a relaxed golfer is, is usually a good golfer. Right. Uh, yeah. And I think that that's what it comes down to is just finding ways to just change that perspective and just say like, look, why, why am I out here? Yeah. And you know, speaking of playing tense, can you imagine these guys who are holding a lead on Sunday in the Masters? How do they play golf? Oh God! With that tense, right? Well, that's a you know, that's a different I think kind of. They, we envy them in a lot of ways. We all want to be playing Sunday at the Masters, but the, on the same token, a lot of ways we're, we're freed from the the tension that they have playing. We are because they they have that pressure. This is their life, their career, their livelihood. Yeah, you know what, what was it? Danny Berger said uh, that feeling is like having a heart attack on every tee box. Yeah. Because you have this lead that you and have I, to hold on to. You I, can't mess up. I believe it. It's, <laughs> it's so wild. And then they and how many stories have we seen where golfers at that level have messed up because they tried just to they, do it. They like they tried yeah. to get too conservative. They got in the and instead of just relaxing and just playing. But I think the one thing that the gift that golf also gives us is that we're always, no matter how bad of a round you are, you gotta remember you're one swing away from from a story you could tell from your lifetime. You are. You could always have a hole in one. 
you could hole out for eagle. It's so true. You know, you 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 never know. You never know. You could shoot 120, but still have an albatross, and it'd be a great day. Yep. You know what I mean? I still remember. And this is a funny one. Um, Wachung Valley. We yeah. played Wachung Valley on a cold day in the fall, and I laughably duffed my tee shot. Duffed it like 20 yards, just rolling along the ground. Third hole. Third hole. You remember that? That's yep. wild. Mm-hmm. Then my second shot. Um, I'm, I, I, what I don't remember was it was the, which one I stuck. Was it my second or my third? Was it, it was a par five. Or par that you I par five. You duffed the first one. I, I, I duffed two in a row, right? Two in a row, and then it was the third. It was your approach shot? Yeah. So, so think of it as a Dark. long. It's a par five. I, I duff my drive about twenty five yards. Gets caught up in the long grass. Then I tried to hit my my hybrid from there, and then I, I duff that again. And I, now I've moved the ball a collective maybe hundred yards. Yep. And then I just remember I pulled out a five iron. And put it to two feet from the pin. Yeah, right. And put it in for birdie. It was great. I mean, and it just, just just shows keep... you like you're one shot away from a great feeling. Yeah, that's it. How yeah. easy does it become to forget those two shots? They become a funny part of the story when you hit that one. And I'm just saying, it can happen. Like, and you could have easily gave up on that hole after those two shots. One hundred. I could have. I could have helicoptered that club into right. the woods mm-hmm. after two duff shots in a row. And now I'm, you know, still whatever it was, two hundred yards out on a par five. Whatever yeah, was. you were 200 left or so. Yeah, something like that. you stopped that thing, I remember. So, I, mm. I mean, it was just, it's just incredible. It just shows you, like, just don't take yourself out of it. Don't walk off the course. You never know. If nothing else, you may have a funny story. You may have a great shot. You may have a laugh with your friends. Just making sure you change that perspective. That's it. Try to find that one thing that can cheer you up or get your mind off of it when it happens. Right. And one thing you can do with that is, and and this is, again, another cliche, but it's cliche for a reason, and the best players do it, is just treating every shot as its own unique instance. You know what I mean? Instead of always thinking about the last shot, like, like I was doing at that example of Patriot Hills, just try to take each shot on as its own new challenge, its own opportunity to learn something new, its own opportunity to try uh, and practice a shot that y- you know you want to get better at, whatever, or an opportunity just for something amazing to happen. Yeah. If yeah. you can do that, I know mm. it's it's easier said than done, but it, it also it's something that for the newer golfers who are listening, it does come with time and practice. As you play the game more, more and more, these stories build up where you were having a trouble and then something happened, you recovered um, and you start to just, you start to become more adept at this idea of just saying, treat each shot as its own. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, I do. And we see the best golfers do it. Yep. So anyway, that's everything we have for you guys this week. Uh, If you haven't done so already, do us a big favor and subscribe to our new podcast channel on YouTube. Like we said, we've moved the podcast onto its own new channel where we're going to dedicate a lot of our time towards really making this show uh, new and and, and just trying to bring some new elements to it. As you can see here, the the structure a little bit different, trying to talk about some more trending, you know, golf news topics and things like that. But the best way to help us out with that, help us grow the show subscribe to the new channel but you can always of course get this the podcast on all your favorite uh podcast audio networks anything from itunes to spotify uh just make sure you hit that subscribe button and leave us a quick review let us know let us know what you think about the new format the new longer format because i know we've been really enjoying i love it yeah loving it so that's everything we have for you guys you can get to the show notes this week by going to golfacy.com slash episode 406 and we'll see everybody again next week enjoy the pnc yeah enjoy it see you next week tiger